glitter, as we know it, was invented in 1934 when American machinist Henry Rushman found a way to chop plastic and mylar sheets into small, shiny particles. And today there are over 20,000 varieties of glitter in different colours, sizes and materials. Now, of course, children love playing with glitter. Its sparkly, powdery, fairy dust-like qualities make it a lot of fun. Indeed, if you attend a birthday party, for example, it's highly likely that glitter at some point will be present. Being thrown around, magicked with, being spilled and finding its way almost everywhere, and of course being stuck to things. Indeed, there's actually something called glitter glue. Glue with glitter in it. Glitter glue. Now, glitter may be fun, but adults and parents watching will know it does usually create a bit of a mess. After a glitter party, clothes need shaken down, the floor needs brushed, and no matter how hard you try, there's always, always an extra little bit of glitter somewhere on your face. Glitter may seem the very epitome of a modern, fun invention, but actually glitter is very old. The word glitter actually comes from Old Norse. It's a Viking word. Around a thousand years ago, the word wasn't glitter, but rather glitra. Now this probably isn't referring to glitter as we understand it. As much as I love the idea of the Vikings sailing the North Sea, casting fabulous plumes of glitter wherever they went. Rather, it refers to something which glitters or shines. Something like sparkling snow, for example. Besides the word glitter, the origins of people making use of glitter-like substances stems back to the Paleolithic, between 15 and 30,000 years ago. The parietal art at Altamira Cave in Spain dates from between 35,000 years ago and 14,000 years ago. It was here that archaeologists found a white paste in a shell into which had been mixed glittery flakes of the mineral mica. Infrared scans show that mica was also used by the ancient Mayans. They created red, green and grey glittery paint to paint their monuments. Yes, entire temples, it seems, in the Mayan world would have glittered in the sun. The use of similar metal ores and flakes can be seen elsewhere. In prehistoric North America, for example, people traded over large distances the metal ore galena. This substance was used to create glittery paint and also for adorning and ornamentation. An advantage of galena was that it could be collected through surface mining, and a particular concentration can be found in burials at Cahokia in Illinois. Here, small cubes of the material were being gathered, and some were even being shaped into jewellery. One of the problems with tracing glitter through history is that it's so small, delicate, and usually used in small quantities. Glittery, iridescent fragments of beetle, for example, are likely to have been used in ancient Egyptian makeup, and many ancient documents, for example the Lindisfarne Gospels, have touches of gold and other sparkly materials to brighten up the pages. And research has shown that many medieval paintings, for example, had ground-up gold dust stamped onto gold leaf or other metallic surfaces to create a gradiated, glittery effect. Sadly, though, over time this glitter has either fallen away, dulled, or otherwise become hard to see. But it's undeniable that human beings have seemingly always been drawn to sparkly things. This is one of the reasons that diamonds are so desirable. They're the ultimate glitter. So whether you're crafting with glitter, covering surfaces in huge amounts of sparkly bits, or simply trying to control the glitter, maybe not get quite so much stuck in your hair, you are in fact indulging in one of humanity's most ancient and pervasive obsessions, named most recently for us, it seems, by the Vikings. <laughs>